Hey guys, this is Neil at Catalyst Machine Works, and today on my bench I've got something extremely exciting. It's not my hands, it's this dude. And this, and this, and last but not least, this guy. About, I guess it was about three or four weeks ago, I was contacted by the guys over at RCN Power. They explained that they have been developing a new X-Class, Beast class motor. This is a gigantic motor for those huge racing rigs that you've seen on YouTube. And they wanted us to try it out, right? So they said they would send us some to try out. And I said, well, hell yeah, I'm not gonna turn that down. So you send it on and we will, we will test the hell out of it. So let's explain what we've got. So we actually got eight of these motors, right? So here's the four that I'm getting. The other four have gone to my professional builder, Alan. He's gonna, he's gonna try his out. And let's open up one of these things and let me show you I opened up one already. Here we go. So this is it here. Look at this thing. It is gorgeous. Look at this motor. Now, um, before I get started, I want to explain that I do not review motors. If you're expecting, you know, a really in-depth, highly technical uh, discussion about this motor, like you'd see on Mini Quad Test Bench, this is not it. All right, I'm just going to give you a very basic. A uh, high-level overview of my thoughts on the motor, and then we're going to go do what matters, and that's actually test this thing. So we're going to install it on a machine, or oh, all four, on a machine, and go out and test them and compare them to some motors that we've been using for a while now. And I'll show you those motors now. The Brother Hobby, this is the 52, what is this, 52, 15, 13, I'm sorry, 330 kV. Let me start over. 52, 15, 330 kV. This is a very popular motor. It's one of the first that came out for X-Class. It's a bit heavy, but it's got a lot of power. Okay, actually it's really heavy. <laughs> this, this is probably one of the most popular motors out right now, and it's what we've been using on our craft. This is the Mad Components uh, Polar Motor, as they call it. This happens to be the 345 kV. Uh, we have also been using the 380 kV on our Tasmanian Beast class, so we'll also be comparing this motor to this motor as well. I think this is the best comparison here since they're closest in weight um, and stator volume. Speaking of stator volume, so this one is a, what is this? This is a 42, hold on, I've got it on my phone here. I just looked it up. Let's have a look, see... This one is a, there it is, 4219, right? So it is 42 in the diameter and 19 tall on the stator. This one is a 4715. Interesting. So it'll be interesting to see the differences in how these two motors perform. Um, I've weighed these things, and I'll show you guys the weight of all three of these motors in a minute. But these have a similar weight, right? This is actually a bit more heavy, not by much, than the polar motor, right? So once we get those installed, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Now, let me give you a closer look at this motor. So, first thing you'll notice is it comes with a prop adapter, the screw-on prop adapter. And I think, in my opinion, for this type of motor, this massive motor that are already so heavy, you know, a prop adapter is a really a good idea because it doesn't, you know, when you have a prop adapter as opposed to an integrated system like this, yes, it adds a little bit of weight, but what's nice is when you crash these big X-Class and B-Class machines, stuff bends, stuff breaks. It's just the way it is. There's too much mass for that not to happen. So if you can replace the prop shaft, that's amazing, right? So I really like that idea. Now, let me give you a close-up look at this thing. Is this thing not, I mean, it's just gorgeous. Look at the machining. The manufacturing is, uh, is beautiful, very well done. I like the design. I can tell they put a lot of thought into the design. I like here on the bottom how it's got, looks like I've got two retention forms of retention here to hold this thing together. There's a C-clip, you can see it just in there. There's also a screw, so that's pretty smart. Um, I can look at the windings and tell that they're very well wrapped, right? They're not all over the place. It's just a very well-made well -made motor. Machining is beautiful. 
How it's going to hold up to crashes is yet to be determined. You know, we'll just have to see what happens. I mean, I don't try to crash, but it may happen. And we'll see it, what happens if I do crash. But, uh, yeah, so that's a look at the motor. So they sent us two different, uh, two different colors. This is the red and black that I chose. And then the other ones are a pink and blue. That's what Alan took, and I kind of wish I had kept his. <laughs> his look really awesome. But these are no slouch. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take the camera off and show you guys what we're going to be installing these motors on. All right. All right, so I've got the camera removed off of my, my rig here. And what we're going to do, lighting here is pretty terrible, so you have to excuse me. What we're going to do is install those motors on this dude. And the way that we're going to go about it is on a completely new base. So if you're not familiar with the cannonball, what you can do is this entire section here that houses all, the, all of the electronics comes off in a unitized piece and you can stick it on a new base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this base, I'm going to cut the arms down to a beast class size. That's this here. Right? That's that size there. And then we're going to install these motors on here. Obviously I'm going to take these motors off and we're going to install these motors and run it in a Cannonball Beast class. And I think that'll be a good comparison. Uh, what I'm going to be comparing it to is this one here. Uh, this is the Tasmanian, uh, but the electronics and whatnot are the same. Uh, and we are running the same as this Cannonball over here. And we're running the Polar Motor. These are the 380 kV. And we've got Master Air Screw uh, 13 by 8 pitch, right? So keep in mind that these motors are a 360 kV. So they're somewhere in between a 345 kV. Well, they're exactly between, focus. This is not going to focus. They're exactly between this 345 kV and a 380 kV. So it'll be interesting to see how the thing performs trying two different types of props, a Master Air Screw 13 and 8, and Master Air Screw 13 by 12. I'm not sure which prop is going to be better for this motor, since it's KV, it's, you know, sits between these two. That's going to be interesting. So that's the plan. Um, it's going to be probably a, you know, maybe a week or so before we get this thing built up and we get it ready to go. But uh, you'll see a second video released soon enough. So I'm going to go ahead and weigh these motors so we can compare the weight. Um, the reason I've got them all splayed out like this is to show you that I've left the wiring um, the length that would be needed for an X-Class build. Right? So this is the typical amount of wiring that you would need. And I wanted to show you guys that the, all of these motors have the same length of wire. Right, so that's a very good comparison for the the weight of the motor. Um, no, I'm not going to be able to go and get the weight of just the motor because I'm not cutting my wires off. <laughs> yeah, you could do that if you wanted to get the weight of the motor itself, but I'm not going to do that. So we can compare like this. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so the first we're going to weigh is the Brother Hobby motor. We got a very accurate scale here. All right. All right, we've got 374 grams. You absolute behemoth of a motor. <laughs> that, weighs, that weighs more than, than this entire quad. All right, very powerful motor though. Do not discount the Brother Hobby 5215, my friends. All right. Now we've got to, you see, we, oh, let's do this one next. See, we got to wrap it up like this. Put some tape on it. All right. There we go. 298. Better. Gonna try we're gonna try 
try this new motor. And get a prop adapter on there. 220, I'm sorry, 324 grams with the prop adapter. So you see what I was talking about earlier is that this motor weighs a bit more than this one, not by much. We're about 25 grams heavier, but it'll be interesting to see how these two perform. Okay, so a difference of that many, of that much, uh, 24 grams in something the size of an X-Class that weighs about 10 pounds, <laughs> once it's all in the air, um, it's really not that much. Okay, so it's, it's not really that big of a deal. So there we go. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned. <laughs>